I mean, just look at this. Look how nice this is. This thing is ultimate craftsmanship. It is so good, just look at that. And this thing is super sharp. So I wanted to try something a little bit different today. So it's still gonna be photography based, but the weather recently has just been absolutely abysmal. We've been getting bombarded with storm after storm after storm. So you might be asking, why have you not gone to the coast? Well, I just haven't had the opportunity. I'd have loved to have got there. I seen the waves crashing up against the landscape, all the lighthouses getting absolutely smashed by waves. I think there would have been some great opportunities, but sadly, I've just not been able to get there. So it got me thinking, whilst I've been here in the studio working on a few little projects, what I could do for my next video is product photography. Now, for my birthday a couple of weeks ago, I got a really, really beautiful Dovo and Celine Bismarck II cutthroat razor. This, ladies and gentlemen, is craftsmanship. Absolutely beautiful. This thing is very, very sharp as expected and it is absolutely fantastic and I used it this morning for a very rather nice close shave. I'm really impressed with the, with the craftsmanship of this but if you go on the website the pictures that they use aren't actually that great so I figured why don't I use this time in the studio while the weather's a little bit crap and see if I can create something really rustic and textured and layered and create a nice image worthy of the craftsmanship of this German cutthroat razor. So what I'll do is I'll take you through the process of how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to build the scene, what I'm going to use, the layers and textures that I'm looking for. I'll show you how I'm going to use my lights, how I'm going to set my camera up. Now the only thing that I'm missing is a macro lens. Macro lenses enable you to get really close and get really fine detail. So I might struggle a little bit like that. And considering this is like a very small-ish item, you do want to be picking up on those details. So fingers crossed I'll be able to either use my 50mm, my 35mm, or even my 85mm and get some really nice shots with it. So I'll go down to my garage because it's full of junk. I've got loads of stuff there that I brought back from Australia, but I've got some really nice little funky items in there. I've got this really cool old uh, toolbox that I got from my great granddad. So that thing has got character and it's got charm and it's got some really nice things inside. So I'm probably going to use that as the base box. So I'll head down there now and we'll show you what we're going to get. So I've come down to my garage to see if I can find any goodies in this place. It's seen better days, so, but fingers crossed, I'll be able to find something that's rustic and it's got character and it's got layers and texture, but I think there should be something in here. Now this is exactly what I'm looking for. This is my great granddad's old toolbox. Now this has got character, this has got texture, and this has got history. Now, in order to get in the box, you need this key. Now I always have this key on me up in my room. So yeah, luckily I haven't lost it and I'll be able to get inside and hopefully there'll be some treasures in there that'll be worthy of the set for the cutthroat razor. Now look at the texture of this. Absolutely fantastic. That is exactly what you're looking for. Now on top of the box, you've got all the scraped out paint and gouges in there and it just adds that layer of texture and detail. And on the inside, Look at that. That is absolutely perfect. And believe it or not, when you open it, it settles like that. So I think that is going to be the surface for the set. And on the inside, I've got little trinkets like this that we can add in there that are going to add nice little things to it. I've got some kind of Skyrim coin. So that's really cool. I can add that in there as well. Check out this. This is an old level, but it's got all this beautiful brass on there and the wood texture again will add so much more to it. Now it's super important when you're doing like a top down shot that you separate the subject from the actual background. So what I've done is there was a little hole punch that was in the box which is really really old. I think it's my great granddad so it's cool that I'm using that but I placed that on top and then I put the cutthroat razor just lying on top now it's precariously balanced but then separates it from the background so you get that nice little bit of shadow underneath it. So what I'll do is I'll show you now how I've got this set up. There's a nice little bit of separation there with this cutthroat razor precariously balanced on something. Now I've got my camera placed looking directly down so we get a nice top down shot like this. I'll flash the image up now and you can see exactly what it looks like.
Now, if you really wanna make your image stand out even more, then you need to add extra elements of depth. Try burning an incense stick. If you burn one of these, it'll generate smoke. And when you generate smoke, it just creates an element of mystery, it creates an element of texture, and it adds extra layers of depth. Bringing smoke into the image will just make your image stand out and just add that extra little bit of class compared to other images. So, I found my Zippo lighter in my granddad's toolbox. How cool is that? I've been missing this thing for such a long time. Maybe I should do some more product photography on this bad boy. Oh, that's so cool. So what I've opted to do now is actually go with the studio lights because I was the light was changing rapidly all the time. So I can't really control the scene. So I've decided to just set up my Godot SK402 with my diffuser and then just use that. And already I've taken a couple of images and they look so much more more controlled and better. So I'll flash them up now and you can have a quick look at just the difference between natural light and studio light. Now I've been having loads of fun with the lights because you've got so much control when you use studio lights. You can move them around the scene, create shadows, create dynamic looking shots. It's so good having that ability to control your light. I've also been enjoying the natural light. Now we've got a little bit later in the afternoon, I opened up the curtains and we've got this really soft, orange light coming through. And because I'm using things like this old strop, which I got second hand, it really bounces that light off and just creates a really nice diffused look. Now, I like having a balance between studio lights and natural light. Studio lights give you so much more control, but natural light just seems to give off a really nice, subtle image. I'm really happy with some of the shots that I've just taken using natural light. I've been doing quite a lot of handheld shots and I'm just loving the colors that I'm getting that are bouncing off this strop and the textures that are being brought out from the wooden box. Another thing that's really good is just having creative fun and how you set up your scene. It's so good having this box as my set because I can use it as a top-down base and I get all these textures and I can turn it on its side, open it up and it just creates this mini studio. Now it's up to you as the creator how you want to go about organizing your set. Now I've gone for more of a minimalistic approach because I really think that this sells itself on its own so you only need to add a couple of extra little things to just bring out that extra panaz in the shot. So like I said, it's all about having creative fun. I've turned the box on its side and it's kind of created this mini studio, which is actually trapping the light in there. And I've added the incense stick at the back and I'll leave it in there for a couple of minutes just to fill the back end of it up with a bit of smoke. I can take it out and it just adds that extra layer of depth to the whole scene. So it's important to try and, you know, add those layers and textures to your images. That's what makes people look at them and say, oh, that's quite a nice image. So. Simple little things like this, just adding that little bit of depth to your images can make them come across so much better and so much more professional looking. I just wanna quickly do a segment on the lenses I've been using. Now, I've primarily been using three lenses. I've been using my Sigma Art 35 1.4, I've been using my Sigma Art 85 1.4, and I've been using this absolute beauty, my Nikon Z 24 to 70 2.8. Now, this lens is absolutely awesome it's so sharp and it's so good it's my go-to lens for pretty much everything and i've primarily been using this mostly to shoot this but i have been using the 35 as well i did try using the 85 but the problem with the 85 is i need to be really far back and i just don't have the room to get this the way i want it to i did take a couple of shots but luckily i am using a nikon z7 which is a 45 megapixel camera so i can crop in quite a bit so I haven't used it that much. So I, like I said, I've been using the 35 and mostly been using this bad boy. But I just wanted to quickly go over that so that you had an idea of the lenses I've been using. Cause like I said earlier, I don't have a macro lens, but I'm still happy with the images I've got today considering I don't have a macro lens. Now I won't lie. I had quite a bit of fun doing that. It's fun to mix up your photography every now and then, and it's nice to be creative in different ways. So product photography isn't something that I've always done, but it's something that I really enjoy doing. It's something that I'd like to do more of. So having the opportunity to do this cut for razor justice has been a really good, you know, it's been fun. I've really enjoyed it. And just look at that. It is absolutely a beautiful piece of kit. So the question is, did I do it justice? Now, I'm pretty happy with a couple of those images and I really think my great-grandfather's wooden toolbox definitely aided the entire 
vibe and setting and scene because I was going for that kind of rustic kind of pirate vibe you know it's it, it it's something that I like I like that kind of theme and I feel like this matched that perfectly and I'm, I'm really happy with a couple of the images now I didn't over complicate the scene in fact I went for quite a minimalistic scene and believe it or not I actually preferred the more natural light window shots than I did with the studio lights now it's nice to have a bit of both but definitely I feel like the natural light shots were actually a far stronger images than the actual um, studio lights. So yeah, it's an interesting one. It's something I'm gonna start dabbling in a little bit more. Can you do product photography in your own room? Yes, 100%, I think you can. I think it's all about setting the scene, adding that depth with, you know, with, with layers, with texture, and adding a little bit of character. So that wooden box from my great granddad really just made everything stand out. It was just, it was perfect. It suited it right down to the ground and the colors matched as well. You got those really nice tones from the wood and also from the strop bouncing into there. And a combination of studio light and also natural light. So which one do I prefer? I actually prefer the natural light images. I feel like they're just a little bit softer. I feel like they worked a lot better. Maybe because the sun was starting to fade, we got that nice soft light and you can't really replicate that with studio lights. Now, if you want me to go over what I did with the studio lights, you know, leave a comment below and I can go over that in a different video. It's not something that I really predominantly use. I do prefer to use natural light. It tends to give a better finish, I think. Studio lights, you've got to really know what you're doing to get a really good finish. Now, these lights that I use, they're pretty basic, but you know, they do give a relatively okay finish. But did I do Dovo and Celine? I think I'm saying that wrong, actually. I think it's not actually pronounced that way. So someone please tell me how it's pronounced because I'm not quite sure. But I had fun doing this. You know, this cutthroat razor is pure craftsmanship. Creating a couple of those pictures, you know, felt really, really, really good. And I'm really happy with the final product. And if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, then let me know. Hit the comments below and uh, yeah, let me know if you think I should uh, do more stuff like this. And also let me know if you feel like I did do it justice. So if you do enjoy the content, then please hit the thumbs up. It does help the channel get out there. And if you want to see more of my ramblings and you want to see more of my shenanigans and you want to see more things like this or the landscape photography, the exploring, solo camping, then please hit the subscribe button because that will get you notified every time I bring out a new video. And like I said, I'm going to try to get out a new video every week. The demands of YouTube are an interesting one, but it's good fun and I enjoy getting this content out for you. So stay safe wherever you are. Have a great week. Enjoy whatever you're doing in the world and I shall catch you on the next episode and I shall say adios for now. Ciao.